anti-war movement, which um, the Raytheon 9 were part of. That it was coordinated by the Irish anti-war movement, and it's basically to discredit them, to discredit the likes. The Irish anti-war movement is a, a coalition of socialists, pacifists, republicans. You no, know, there's a whole lot of different types of people there. Basically, what they'll turn around and say to them, to try and discredit them, is saying, "Look at you, the Raytheon 9. Half you are in the IRA, and you call yourselves anti-war." You know, it'll be, it'll be, and then it'll, it'll go into the American war on terror. These people have been, you know, on the ban list. The Americans have them banned. 32 county sovereign movement and ugly and iron. So, you know, there's that whole aspect of it to, to try to discredit them, probably. And uh, another feature of Easter commemorations is wearing the Easter lily on your lapel. Not only is it done in Dublin, but done up in the Bronx and around the world, Australia, New Zealand, wherever there's a commemoration to honor the men and women of 1916, but it's also done within inside the prisons themselves. I know in Port Leash there's commemorations held by Republican prisoners there. Maybe you can describe what happened in Macaberry Prison when one of the prisoners tried to commemorate the, the men and women of 1916 in Dublin? Well, basically, a young prisoner, a guy called Anton Craig from Belfast, was returning from the canteen. He was allowed out of the canteen to get his breakfast and take it back to the cell and to get locked up for, for another 23 hours. But um, they told him to take the, the Easter Lily off his, his, his jumper. They told him it was a sectarian emblem. Now, of course, as a Republican, he refused to do this. He said there's no way... So that was all right. They said they're going to charge them then, which basically they have the right to charge you and put you in punishment then for whatever amount of time they decide. So he, on going back to the cell, he had a token protest in which he basically he racked the table and chairs, whatever, more or less to make a bit of noise to let people know what was happening, you know, across the wings. Um, a while later, there's eight heavily armed, heavily protected members of the riot squad come in and more or less badly assaulted him, rammed his head to the ground, twisted him every shape, and um, they had proceeded to wreck the cell, the, uh, parts of the cell that he didn't destroy. They destroyed the water, they destroyed his electricity, they destroyed his toilet, and they took everything out of the cell and left him with the bed. And basically, till now, he's been sitting in that cell with nothing except the bed, with the toilet that doesn't flush, with water, sinks that the water doesn't work, and no lights, no nothing. So, that's what you get for commemorating Republican dead in, in one British institution in Ireland. Though, ironically, you can wear your Easter lily up a storm with no problem. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is ironic. And, and now how Stormont, which is a British institution, uh, they're trying to use it to commemorate uh, IRA volunteers up there, which, which is very strange. And I, and I saw one of the statements given by somebody in Provisional Sinn Féin stating that uh, had Mairead Farrell, who was executed by the SAS in Gibraltar, been alive today, that she would be an elected representative standing with them there in storm and administering British rule in Ireland. Now, that is, I would say, a very long stretch, but it just shows there's no ends that they will not go to speak on behalf of uh, dead Republicans. No, well, the, the ideological somersaults and, and mental, mental gymnastics that they seem to be able to perform are staggering. You know, I mean, there's nothing they wouldn't say. I mean, how would anybody know what Maria Farrell would do? You know, Maria Farrell, all we do know is what she died for. We don't know what would have happened. Chances are she probably wouldn't have been sitting in Stormont. I mean, most Republicans of her era aren't. Most Republicans of her, her era have left the Republican movement. It's all new faces that have come into Sinn Féin now. Or sorry, the Sinn Féin movement. I said the Republican movement. I mean the Sinn Féin movement. Mm. The original Sinn Féin. You know, so it's, it's an awful set of the imagination. But that's, that's the sort of thing that they're, they're trying to, to sell to people, you know. And we recently had the death of Darkie Hughes, who was the OC both in the cash and on the H blocks and in Belfast uh, of the IRA, one of the most distinguished Republicans of this generation. And who had spoken out and in writing said he utterly condemned the pre present policy of the, the provisional leadership. But they tried to claim at, on his deathbed, when he actually he was unconscious, that he had a great reconciliation with Jerry Adams and said, oh, I was wrong. You were right, Jerry. So I think it's very fortunate that Dr. Hughes had the opportunity to put his views in writing very strongly and go on the record. That otherwise, 
he would be posthumously a great fan of the peace process. Well, that's that's true. You know, that's more or less what's happened right across the board. Um, various people would have done this. Or, there's, I mean, there's no evidence to suggest there was any sort of reconciliation. People close to it, uh, again, as you've stated, stated that the dark was unconscious. I mean, he could not have said anything to Adams. But Adams hasn't said there was a reconciliation, but has, um, you know, more or less allowed others to say it and hasn't contradicted it, you know. So not only are they speaking for dead volunteers, they're speaking for dying volunteers as well, which is pretty sick if you ask me. Now, Andy, how do you feel the Easter commemorations went this year throughout Ireland? I can tell you up here in the Bronx it was more enthusiasm. I, I think people are seeing far more clearly that they are now part of the British system, the former comrades that used to come out here to New York, and that uh, people are finally coming to the realization, even though it's taken quite a while, that uh, provisional Sinn Féin have sold out and sold out totally, and that uh, people are, are, are getting back to basics. Now, how did you find the commemorations that were held throughout the six counties? Well, I found that the commemorations to be like that. There was a lot of enthusiasm. There was a lot of faces that I haven't seen for years turning up to the commemorations. Um, you know, people, it, it, it wasn't lost on the people that Adams and McGinnis were in Dublin for the Free State commemoration. And, and that's right. Martin McGinnis was on the reviewing stand on O'Connell Street with Bertie Ahern reviewing the Free State troops marching up uh, O'Connell Street, the same Free Street uh, State troops that used to arrest his comrades. The same Free State troops that uh, arrested Gary Donnelly right. and Mickey Gallagher. I mean, it's, people have seen it. It did take people a long time, but it was always going to take people a while. Not everybody... You know, got it in 1987, 1988, or 86, depending well, on your viewpoint. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> uh, not everybody got it then. And we always knew that it would take time. That's why we kept coming out with the same message, basically waiting. That we knew it was going to take time. You know, there was a lot of people in that movement for a lot, large portion of their life. You can't just expect them to automatically. You know, there's a whole social network there, family networks, etc., which people find it hard to leave. But I think it's basically it's, it's come to critical mass now. People have just seen exactly where Provisional Sinn Féin stand on issues like policing, on issues like um, governing Britain, the British portion of Ireland, you know. Well, uh, Andy, we thank you for coming on, and we'll keep updates, uh, particularly on uh, Gary Donnelly, Martin O'Neill, Mickey Gallagher, and Patty McDade, who are now being held in the 26 counties. Had they stayed... In the six counties, they would not have been arrested. They're now being charged with membership in an illegal organization. 